we're back uh, with part two. And so we're just sort of coordinating, sitting back in at the table here. Uh, and I just decided in the meantime to steal two bucks from Kyle. And now I'll try to steal more money. <laughs> Maybe all these guys are trying to get their uh, stuff situated. I can make some money. <laughs> That's how, how low I go. <laughs> All right. All right, so pocket sixes. Um, definitely, uh, obviously, a raising hand. And I get three bet. And so I'm going to call here. Um, I may just play for set. I'm not sure. I usually like to have a plan before I play, so I think I'm, what I'm going to do is my plan is going to be to just play for a set. Uh, it might be a little weak, but well, now, now all the money's going in. I flopped uh, an overpair and a straight draw, so um, really bad turn card for me. So um, I think what I'm going to do is check and call, let them know that I have uh, some kind of hand, um, and you know, he might very well have a king, but I still have six outs to pretty much anything he could have. Um, even if he does have a hand like king, queen, ace, king, stuff like that. And so now that he's checked again, um, I'm just going to check it back and hope he has like ace, queen or something and just wants to show it down. I mean, he could be getting tricky. You know, it wouldn't be bad for him to check behind like a king on the turn and then go for a little value on the river. But I think I'm just going to have to pay it off. OK, so yeah, total junk. <laughs> Not surprising there. And that's why I was saying it was a little weak to just sort of play for the set. But there's not a whole lot of great options. I mean, we're a little deep. And uh, you know, it's a pair of sixes. I mean, there's not going to be a lot of great flops. And, you know, I mean, sure, I could check raise some flops that might look nasty for him, stuff like that to try to get him to fold. And But, you know, sometimes the best option is to just, you know, just play for your set and uh, go from there. So I'm going to try to get uh, the poker ace going with uh, get get it going on the screen. We'll get these guys' numbers. It should be pretty funny. Um, I'm working on that right now. So bear with me for a second. Okay, I think I got it now. We'll see if these guys pop up. So I'm not seeing the numbers pop up just yet. <coughs> it's a little disappointing. Um, seems to be working on my poker ace, but uh, my poker ace seems to be working, but n the numbers aren't coming up, which is unfortunate. Uh, so with the ace four, um, I'm just going to go ahead and fold to Bryce's raise. Yeah, I'm really not sure how to get this up here. Oh, there we go. All right. So we have uh, everyone's playing pretty reasonably, actually. Nothing. I would have thought some of these guys were a little bit looser, but nothing too crazy.
Well, and also bear with me for one sec. I'm going to try to get these numbers uh, going in there. Whoops. All right. Again, I apologize for that. I'm just uh, trying to get everything situated here and trying to get these uh, numbers flowing in from uh, so I can get all the latest up-to-date information. So I actually think Kyle's playing pretty reasonably. Um, normal for him. Nick, this is extremely loose for Nick. 31, 21. Uh, sit and go man. 31, uh, 22. That's, you know, reasonably loose. Bryce, I guess, you know, not that loose. I, for some reason, I just uh, thought that they were playing a lot uh, more loose than this, but apparently they're not. But all our aggression factors are pretty high. <laughs> or at least decently high. Um, Ace 4 suit, I'm going to go ahead and open here. And I, I'm definitely getting a lot of credit, it seems, when I raise a pot. I'd be interested to know what my numbers are right now. I feel like I've splashed around a little bit. And I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm finding these numbers to be a little bit distracting. I mostly wanted to get the numbers, but I don't have my ace configured the way I like it, and it's sort of interfering with stack sizes and the pot button and stuff. So I'm actually going to uh, get rid of it right now. And we'll just uh, go back to playing some poker. It was mostly just interesting to see what these guys were playing like, and now that we know, I'm, I pretty much have it all memorized. So... No real need to keep it up there. It looks like I'm scrolling through this chat. It looks like uh, Colin is. <laughs> I don't know if he's being serious or not, but he asked he asked us if we were listening to music, and we we're like, no, we're trying to record a video here, and <laughs> he's saying he's got his main boy MC Ricky D <laughs> blast in, and the neighbors are complaining. And then says, I'm not supposed to be recording, am I? <laughs> oh, man. I actually wouldn't be surprised if uh, he, this is true. He may not he may not be uh, recording at all for the audio part. Here's a beautiful hand. He's king suited. So it looks like the only one I'm really deep with is, uh, is Colin. You know, three. Gosh, that's super deep. That we're all 250 blinds deep if we were to play a pot. <coughs> oh, this leaves me in a pretty dicey spot here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play it pretty straight. F oh, boy. I'm going to... Oh, God. You know what? I haven't played a lot of pots in this team before. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, this is a tricky spot. I think I am going to play it more straightforward and just raise it up. Um to 46, and if either of these guys come back over the top, if they can come over the top of that, I have to fold. But it can definitely get me. I'm just going to have to play this hand straightforward. I mean, I'm just going to bet and fold. So I'm going to bet 85 in a $96 pot, and if he shoves here, then, you know, what can I do? I'm just going to... I mean, I can't call these high. So, that that worked out. You know, it 
it's a little bit of a dicey spot, I'm not going to lie. Oh man, I was really hoping that Sit and Go Man would have played um, that one. Because we could have maybe had some fireworks uh, this deep. And the fact that if he would have raised and I would have re raised him again, there would have been a lot of re raising uh, against him, and he may have decided to uh, take a stand, which would be a beautiful thing when you're holding a safe. So, King 9 suited. I'm going to go ahead and raise it on the button. Whoops. I feel like I should do something a little funky. I feel like I should do like a misclick or something. Like accidentally on purpose. Um, this is the kind of flop. Uh, he's going to check raise me a lot on, but he's going to have to do a little more than that because I'm going to call if he does check raise. And it's just sort of a dry board and <coughs> not a lot I can have. Um, I could see him, especially in a more aggressive mindset, check raising, and that's exactly what he did. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call and make him um, make him fire again. And I feel like if he can fire again, there's a reasonable chance he does have a big hand. And I'm going to go ahead and give it to him. But <coughs> if he checks here, um, my only decision would be whether to bet the turn or the river. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sort of a smallish bet make it look like I'm just trying to get the money in and make it look cheap for him. So I'm just going to bet 50 into a $76 pot. And if he's going for something crazy like a double check raise or something, then, you know, good for him. But, um, you know, I'm going to make him do a lot of work to steal a pot away because that's just a type of board where you're just going to get check raise too often. Um, and you can't just let players steal from you like that. So luckily that worked out there. Man, he's really coming after me. This is pretty, pretty good. Um, I just don't think that this is the type of hand, though, that's going <coughs> to be profitable for me to call with, so I'm just going to have to let it go. <coughs> so look at Kyle. LOL, I'm not supposed to be recording myself talk, right? You have to play good for that. <laughs> so, I mean, they are just, uh, so no. No, LOL, good. Um, yeah, I mean, these guys are, these guys are all uh, giving each other crap, which is great. One thing that is kind of fun, I feel like I'm getting a lot of playable hands here. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I feel like I've been playing a fair amount. And he re-raises me again. Now, I kind of think this is a trap. I, I'm going to go ahead and go out on him and say he has a hand this time, and I'm going to fold again. And maybe I'm wrong, but generally when a guy re-raises twice right in a row, usually the second time he, he maybe has something. So um, I went ahead and gave him that one too. But, you know, he definitely, he's, he's definitely uh, moving the chips around a little, which is fun. It's kind of one of those things I have to concede. You know, I have position on a deep stack. Um, I have position on Bryce, uh, who's reasonably aggressive. Looks like he's toning it down a little bit. And, uh, you know, so there's some positives. But one of the negatives is certainly being out of position against Kyle, who's, you know, one of the best no-limit players out there. Um, so, uh, you know, it's going to be a little tricky, and it's never easy, but... You know, if I can just hold my own and, you know, really, truthfully, only lose a small amount to him, which would be a good result, because um, <coughs> being out of position against a very good player, you, you, unless the cards really fly your way, you're just not going to win money. It doesn't matter who you are. You can't play out of position against someone even of slightly lesser skill than you, um, profitably. You just you just don't. So, you know, if I, if I can contain uh, my loss uh, to a small amount, that would be a, a good result for me. You know, if 
five position on him, this would be a whole different ball game. <laughs> Believe me, I'd be coming after him. We got a little pot brown here, making a big river bet. I'd like to see him look him up here, see what's going on. So he's really thinking about this one. <laughs> So that's a good value bet by uh, Kyle. You sort of made it look like he might have a hand like 9-8 or king-queen. And he went ahead and sort of bet close to pot. Um, again, the sort of minish smallish uh, raise here. I'm going to do something a little tricky. I'm actually going to call, and then if Kyle squeezes, I'm going I'm to re-squeeze re it. Uh, I just think he's going to squeeze it a lot here. Um, if nothing else, I'm going to have position in the hand, which is good. Um, so I fought bottom pair, but we are deep, and I'm going to put him on an ace a decent amount of time, and I'm going to call here and basically, you know, maybe steal it away at a later point if the board gets ugly for him, but also, you know, try to spike my five outer with some pretty good odds to do so. At least I'm hoping I have five outs, you know, I'm, I'm sort of putting him on an ace at this point. So really not a good card for me. Uh, he instantly checked. I feel sort of obligated. Well, I can say I feel sort of obligated to take a stab. But he did bet into two people. This could be like a pot control thing. I think if he checks the river, if the river gets even scarier, like a 10 or a queen or a jack, um, I'm going to go ahead and bet. Um, and now that the uh, jack hit, if he does not bet, I'm going to have to bet. And so he did lead out. So, and I think ace queen is a really big part of his range. So uh, I'm gonna give him give him credit there. He did play that hand like an ace queen. Let's see what um, Colin's up to in the chat here. Thought you might be bluffing, and then I would like, <laughs> like a, be like a badass calling on the video. Obviously, people would be like, "Man, that sit and go guy got game." <laughs> Last was not to be. <laughs> These guys are funny. Interesting little spot here. If I were Nick I, and I had a hand, I would go for a check raise. Um, you know, Kyle could just be floating in with nothing. You know, and you're going to go broke either way. You're not going to give him credit, like, for trips or anything, so... Not in this game. So Kyle, this is a little dangerous because Kyle's building this monster stack and he's got position on me. Uh, pocket Jack's obviously an easy race and nice to have him not in the pot. And steal the blinds again. This is uh, not fun to play steal the blind poker. Come on, guys.
I'm talking a little smack here. One big bed an hour is your goal. How do you... and protective when you're behind. That's classic. He's quoting rounders perfectly. <laughs> Coming after Kyle a little bit here. it up a little. If you three bets me next time, I'll play the pot no matter what. Even if I have like offsuit junk. Great comeback. You've been driving Kanisha's truck, you keep it up. Oh, that is Maybe he'd get involved on my last hand. Um, you know, after all that, after all that smack, I've been talking. I'm so tempted to get in here and raise. I, I kind of feel like maybe I should loosen up a little. It's just so brutal because I'm freaking out of position against Kyle here, and boy. That's not going to be fun to, you know, he loosens up, he's using me all over that. And then we're playing my junk can out of position in a re-raised pot against a tough player. So, I mean, tight is obviously best. And it's not like my 4-bet, if I do that, gets me any credit. Um, after all that smack I've been talking. Hit on my left donkey, am I right? <laughs> Position on the fish. <laughs> Look at these guys giving me crap. <laughs> crack up. are going at it. <clears throat> going at it, these limit guys. Used to play in their heads up matches all the time. So they're probably used to just fighting for every pot. It's got to be kind of weird 
you know, playing fit or fold for the most part. Just kind of what No Limits um, about. Um, well, another way is I'm just going to go ahead and make a loose call. Probably wouldn't recommend it, but again, I just don't think, like, usually the reason why you don't put in these calls is, first of all, it's not great odds, um, which is obviously a big part, but uh, Colin's deep, and I don't expect his range to be so huge that he's going to be re-raising, and if I flop a set and he, you know, gets a piece of it in an already big pot, the money's going to go in, so um, it was just too tempting. So uh, I have zero outs to improve <laughs> um, if he has a pair larger than mine, which I think he does a lot, so I'm just going to fold here. There we go. I would put, I don't know, call him like a medium pair of some kind. Oh, wow. Just a total bluff. <laughs> Quads. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad I didn't have, like, aces there. That could have been pretty, pretty nasty for me. that one hand a while back in the part one of the video. But I'm not so sure if that's, you know, might be a slight embezzlement. Wait, is that even a word? <laughs> I don't think that's the, the right word I was looking for. Maybe it was. I don't know. I'm losing it. Actually, as I film this, because of my elite chase, I'm, um, I've pulled an all-nighter and so it's like, so I've been up, you know, 24 plus hours straight, um, which is fine, but uh, don't expect uh, <laughs> the most intelligent things to be coming out of my mouth. <laughs> That's called a semi-bluff. My 5 high could have been good there. Look at these guys. Oh boy, so Bryce Rios, you were just too deep and, you know, it's, I wish it was suited here, but I'm, I'm just gonna have to, uh, take the flop and just hope to, you know, hit the two pair straight or something. Um, and over pot, easy fold, so. Um, you know, just kinda play that fitter fold. I think with my position and with, uh, uh, you know, having a hand that, that can at least make a little something, I, I think that's a, I think that's a correct call there, being that deep. I wouldn't call uh, if we weren't deep, but you know, deep stack no limit positions paramount. Um, you know, if I flop a good hand, I can get the money in a lot easier than if he flops a good hand on me, and you know, I were to have a hand, I'm willing to go broke with. So. So Kyle's saying, you just try to bluff a limit player with God mode. Man, I've tried to bluff price lots, never works. <laughs> oh boy. We're going to open the Queen 9 offsuit on the button. And so I flop a uh, gut shot straight draw. And so. Uh, I'm gonna bet and call a check raise if he if he does check raise me. And just sort of you know player position, uh, keep the pressure on him, um, you know if that's an option. But we're just gonna start by continuation betting. It's all premature at this point. <laughs> uh, so he check raise me again. Uh, you know I just think that this is air a lot that he's gonna give up on. Um, I also have, you know, I can catch my jack, so I'm going to go ahead and call. And I don't improve, and I don't know if I'm going to get away with floating him again and stealing it away. 
Um, I think this time you might be check raising me for real, so uh, I'm gonna. I, I expect a bet here, and I'm just gonna have to fold. Um, if he does check, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna check, and if he checks the river, I'll bet. And so he, you know, he makes a bet that tells me he wants to get the money in. Um, there's just not much I can do here. Uh, this this could be a big hand, so I'm gonna have to fold. Okay, so boy, we're all so deep stacked. This is just so interesting. I, I have my standard sort of plays. I'm I'm sort of being put outside my box here. You know, playing 200 blind stack. I, I'm just gonna call it the queens and. You know, if uh, just play it slow, go for the set. You know, if I flop an over pair, I can try to play like a medium-sized pot. And so this kind of board, um, you know, if a guy puts in a check raise or something, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to uh, give it to him. I think what I'm gonna start off and just sort of defining the situation. I'm gonna go ahead and put like a little min raise in here. And hopefully what that's going to do is slow him down a little bit if he does, you know, because I'm going to have to pay off a little bit if he has kings or aces or flop to set or something. Um, if he can come over the top of this, because, you know, it's a little minish, uh, little min raise, but still scary because a dry flop, and I just called pre-flop, which means, you know, pocket fives, pocket twos, certainly well within my range. So uh, we'll play the type of poker he's used to, which is min bet. <laughs> So I'm going to min, min raise them. And it's mostly just to, you know, if I just call there, these other guys can get tricky, trappy with a little uh, set. And if I call it, it's going to really define everybody's situation. And it's going to avoid me losing uh, more than I need to lose. Uh, not the best uh, flop to continuation bet, and I also think he's going to be playing this position and probably floating me with probably any two cards here. So I'm just going to check fold. <laughs> so now uh, Matt's giving a little, uh, talking a little smack here. You know you want a $400 pot with 7% equity, right? <laughs> Well, <laughs> you can try to confuse the issue with your fancy jargon. No, this is actually more, but we all know that was a coin flip. Bunch of cards to chop. <laughs> all these guys coming after each other. You know, I've given it to stocks a bunch. I, I, uh, I might toss in a check raise. Um, on the flop uh, next time he floats me out of position. Certainly an option. Okay, he's giving me crap. I just check fold, yeah. Well, what am I going to do? You guys get position on me. here, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, call, again, sort of, you know, play my position, play for the set, all that good stuff. Um, you know, if I 3-bet, if I it just runs the risk of getting 4-bet. So, wow. And so, flop a set on a really dry board. Uh, this is going to be, I'm just going to try to, I'm going to obviously have to play it slow. Um, this is going to be one of those, if I get a ton of action, I could actually even consider um, folding at some point, being this deep. But at this point, that's certainly not the plan. I'm just going to make sort of a little probing bet here. Try to 
try to figure out what's going on. Bryce could have an ace and just be trying to keep the pot small. It's tough to say. So, a little disappointing there. That's one of those situations, though, when you're that deep, you probably aren't going to get action that wants to go on unless you're beat um, on a board like that. I mean, maybe a guy's ace nine. That's the kind of flop where you really want to have nines and try to get a guy like me with twos. The problem with ch checking that, because it looked like nobody was too interested in the pot, the problem with checking there is that, you know, you don't really want to give guys a shot at their two outer when you have a hand that you're going to lose a significant amount of chips with um, when they hit. So it's kind of more or less one of those things where you might want to just bet and just hope somebody has, like, ace-king and is trying to play a medium-sized pot. And you can maybe, you can get, like, one buy-in worth. You know, trying to just bet like two thirds pot the whole way and keep them strung along. Um, you know, I mean, if I check and then like say even just a harmless like six comes out and I bet and the guy raises me, I mean, it's just you're just in just gross spots. So I'd rather just make life a little easier, bet out and just hope to win like a medium sort of pot. Um, Jack ten offsuit. Uh, I'm just gonna float him here. I don't really think that uh, raising is very good. And uh, and since I did call, I'm probably going to go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on him on this kind of flop with the uh, dry board. So I'm going to take the line that looks most scary. And this is an aggressive line, but um, with deep stack, I think it's best. And I'm going to go ahead and I was going to call the flop and then raise the turn. And now that I pick up a gut shot, it's even better because I... I even have some equity, so, um, and then if he checks, that's obviously good, because I can hopefully just make a small bet and take it away if he has, like, a hand like Queen Jack or something. So, tiny bit of a mixed blessing, because he could easily have picked up a flush draw at some point, and so I'm just going to make a very callable bet, because his hand is either very strong or very weak. And so I'm just going to bet 40 in the $55 pot, and hopefully he looks me up as, like, you know, ace -X. I can't re-raise here. If he made a backdoor flush, that's going to be really sick, but I'm just going to call it and pay off. So he went for a check raise on the river with ace-8 there. I don't think I could have got any more money from that hand, um, you know, that would have been a really fun spot to be in if uh, if uh, the flush hadn't hit, because then I would have the you know the nuts. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> these guys are funny. Keep going out that rent money. <laughs> that's great. Uh, actually, probably looked a little fishy to some people. That's actually very standard high stakes no limit play to be floating there and and looking to uh, uh, take it away, you know, on the turn, um, or at some point in the hand. I eat runner runners for breakfast. <laughs> they probably just see so many brutal beats. I mean, I, I do remember I played Lemon Holden for over a year. Um, I 
been in the Linux holding pro since uh, summer of 06, early summer, late spring. Um, so, talking like a year and a half. Uh, so, the first year and a half, because I've been a pro for three years now, was when I hold them. Uh, it was more or less just a uh, you know mid stakes, small to mid stakes grinder, bonus horde type. Uh, you know, I made a small amount of money plus the bonuses, and you know, it was I was perfectly happy doing that. I'm, but um, you know, because I'm sort of a grinder at heart, but it was nice to uh, be able to progress into the you know mid high stakes uh, no limit games and be able to succeed in those. A lot more fun, I'll admit, than getting runner honored for, uh, you know, $48 pots at <laughs> three six or, you know, whatever I was playing. So it looks like we only have a few more hands just left. It's kind of unfortunate. I could, I could go on forever at this table. These guys are a lot of fun to play with, and talking all the smack is fun. So this, this looks like this could be the biggest pot of the day if, if Nick decides to go with it. I don't think he can really call. So I'd be interested to see if he if he goes ahead and goes with the hand. Oh my gosh. He did it. <coughs> that doesn't look like Kyle's calling. He would have <coughs> he would have snap called. <coughs> my guess is he put stocks on on a big bear that just couldn't withstand playing uh, a, that big of a pot on a board like that, which is a good play by Kyle. Uh, but he does have time, so he's either talking about it for the video or he really is thinking. I can't imagine he's. I mean, I can't. I don't. There's no hand that can raise there and then not call unless he was on a bluff. Like, I mean, any flush draw he has to call. Like, you know, if he has any set, he has to call. So I think he's uh, more than likely just talking about things or bringing up a point for the video. I mean, maybe he has a hand like Jack-9. That would be, or like Jack-7. That would be a pretty nasty spot. Maybe even Jack-9 would be a nasty spot, because Queen, you know, 10-8. Pocket sevens, you know, you're in pretty bad shape. <laughs> so, he's talking about going blind all in the last hand just to juice things up a little. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I might be a little too prideful. I, after all, I'm a leather ass. I mean, I'm grinding on my hand money here. I'm not going to toss it all in the middle for a uh, uh, coin flip. I mean, I guess if everybody is overwhelmingly in favor of it, I might do it, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess, I mean, who am I kidding? I'm not, like, uh, going to have a, a heart attack if, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to have a heart attack if, if we have to go with it. I mean, you know, it was mostly just fun making the video, but at the same time, I would I would prefer not to. <laughs> um, so we want to raise and raise again, and I think next deep enough and. Everyone's kind of deep, and I'm going to go ahead and put in a call. This is about the third or fourth time I've called a three back call, which is something I hardly ever do. Um, so I fought middle pair. Uh, I might tank a little and make it think like I'm uh, doing something or going to do something. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tank it all like, I'm, you know, like I said, like I'm thinking, and I might make a play later on, and, and that sort of might get him to think, uh, to think I might have something and sort of not bet. So now that I pick up the gut shot, I'm going to go ahead and bet out. And I can't imagine 
you know, I can't imagine uh, them looking me up, uh, you know, with anything less than a jack. Um, bad river card in the sense that he could have easily picked up like 10-9, stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and check, and uh, if he bets, I'm just going to have to fold. You know, he may have a jack as well, and, you know, he may have... He may have a big hand. So Ace Eight, pretty pretty loose call there. Um, I'll have to say it's. Uh, I don't necessarily love it, but uh, not not a bad call either. He's definitely uh, keeping me honest. But uh, looks like that's the end of the video. Uh, I enjoy. I enjoyed. Uh, oh, it looks like Bryce is actually asking me. What I had, uh, <laughs> he was uh, pretty into that. But anyway, I think we're gonna call it a video here, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I look forward to hearing all that you guys have to say about the video. And hopefully, I didn't spit all over myself <laughs> commentating on it too much because I am pretty tired. But uh, um, thanks for bearing with me on that. Uh, Till next time, we'll see you guys.